Hi, and welcome to Educational Tutorials. Today I'll be explaining some scams you might find online and on YouTube that explain how it'll speed up your computer's processing speed and it'll just make your computer run faster. Now, most of their ideas usually work, but they like miss out on one or two and they think these work, but in reality they just don't. And I'll get into three of them. So the first one is temporary, temporary files. So temporary files do improve your computer speed because they only occur for a little bit of time and then your computer wipes it out, but sometimes your computer forgets to wipe them all out. That's why if you just delete them all, it's better for you. But what people don't know is, usually videos and online websites, they tell you to delete two files. One is the temp file, so we can click, we can search up run. And then you can search up percent, ten percent, and this huge amount of files shows up. Now these these are temporary files. It's good to delete them because the computer just uses them a bit and then just deletes them. So there's there's no point in having these. You can just delete them, and sometimes they forget to delete it. So this one file may stay here for a long time. Like I see, I still have. 2016 files i'm not sure so like yeah okay deleting these are okay however they also tell you to delete files from prefetch now these files are actually useful they think these are temporary files and like delete them and you'll gain more space but these files are useful because your computer will recognize what applications you're using and what you usually like to start off first like maybe you always go on your PDF, maybe always go on Chrome, maybe always go on Microsoft Edge, I don't know. But it'll find that out and put them in the prefetch file and so next time it'll load up faster. So when you delete this, you're actually slowing down the time it takes to open up some applications and whatnot. So don't delete prefetch files, but delete the temp files. That's what I'm saying here. Now the next scam is CPU processors. So most people tell you to um, change your processing, um, the amount of processors you have on your computer that's being used. They're like, oh, you only have like two being used, but in total your computer can have four. So they tell you to use four. But in reality, your computer is already using four and they haven't really done anything. This doesn't do anything bad, but it's not actually causing anything. You're like doing nothing. You haven't really done a single thing. So they'll tell you to type in misconfig and go to system configuration or they'll get here in another way they'll tell you to go on boot in advanced options and they'll tell you oh look you only have one so they click number of processors and they tell you to go to eight or whatever your highest number is save that click ok and then apply it click ok and then it says restart but for now i'm going to exit without restart because i don't want to restart but let's go back to um, our system configuration and boot. So the, the thing they don't know is having eight here and having one here with the gray default, this means that it's automatically going to be at eight. So when you haven't actually chosen a specific number and it's just in gray and you're not allowed to choose, see, not allowed to choose, I have to click this box to choose, it automatically sets it at the highest number which is 8 for me. And to prove this, I can right click my bar here, click task manager, um, open up performance, and, okay, sorry. This is what will normally show up. Your CPU activity, its utilization, its speed, its uptime, and whatnot. However, what they don't, however, you can right click this, click change graph to and search up logical processors. You would notice that 8 was my max, it also says 8 right here. So I will go to logical processors and you can see 8 of them. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which, which is actually 8 in total because there's a 0. But there's 8. So my computer is already using its max even though in that tick it said in that box it said 1 but because your computer automatically uses 8 at default, changing it doesn't really do a thing. So you may as well just keep it where, where it's at because it doesn't do much. You don't do anything actually, so I'm like, it's not even like it doesn't do much. 
So that's the second scam. It doesn't do anything bad, but you're not actually changing anything. You haven't done anything. You haven't you haven't sped up your computer by any means at all. Now the last scam I'll be talking about now is Ready Boost. Now, Ready Boost is basically when you install a USB onto your um, laptop, desktop, whatever you have, and you open up a file and you use Ready Boost. Now, what Ready Boost? So your computer has something called a super fetch, where it finds all the data you use and stores it in the RAM. Because if your computer, when it normally wants something, it'll get from the hard drive. But it's much slower from getting. It's much slower when it gets it from the hard drive. So whatever you use often and normally, it'll store it in the RAM. It's a lot easier to access the RAM, which is called Random Access Memory, short form for that. And so it'll access it from the RAM than the hard drive because it's faster and it's much more efficient. It's better for you. So that's what the super fetch does. Now Ready Boost stores some of its. So basically, whatever you have in um your super fetch, like some bit, like I don't know, a few thousand MB, like five thousand, three thousand, two thousand, I'm not sure. So it'll store it into your USB, so you save some space in your RAM. Therefore, you can put more stuff in your RAM. Now this is only efficient for desktops and lap laptops for um, a small amount of RAM, so it actually doesn't do anything because nowadays your RAM is like 8 GB, 16 GB, before it was like 1 GB, 500 MB, which isn't a lot. So Ready Boost is incredibly useful if you don't have a lot of RAM, but nowadays laptops, desktops, they all have a decent amount, so Ready Boost doesn't make a significant difference. You can still use it, but it won't be as efficient because you may as well um, use the RAM you have because you don't need to free up space. So it's better to just normally use whatever you're using instead of trying to make your computer faster using Ready Boost, unless you do have a small amount of RAM, therefore you can use if you do, you can use Ready Boost or buy more RAM, but if you have a spare USB stick lying around for some reason, you may as well use it because it's going to help you. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you've learned from this video, and bye.